Dalinar Colon has to be one of my all-time favourite characters in fantasy and definitely one of my top 5 favourites in the Stormlight Archive. His character arc speaks to me more than any of the others and his personality exemplifies the type of person I think many of us wish we could become. Dalinar is a man that goes from a fearsome warrior and a warlord to a thoughtful and caring leader. He faces trials and tribulations on his way, but he also has to deal with his own self-created demons as well. He's a man that pushes through the challenge and faces his problems head on. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First we must look at just who Dalinar Colin really is. Dalinar is an Alethi High Prince and younger brother to Gavilar. As a younger man, he was renowned on the battlefield as a fearsome man who nobody wanted to mess with. He was the sword that Gavilar wielded against those who opposed his united kingdom. Because of this, Dalinar was understandably arrogant and stubborn. Things went his way and when they didn't, he could force them to. Dalinar often cared for little else but the next battle. When he finally got married in what was purely a political union, he still struggled to find in his heart any room to love his wife more than he loved the fight. At least initially. We saw the first bits of the eventual man Dalinar would become when his eldest son, Adolin, was born. He finally began to care more for his wife and son. He found a love in himself for them that he did not realize he had the capacity for. By the time his second son, Renarin, was born, Dalinar had developed a deep love for his family. But he was still a warrior. During the siege of a particularly stubborn High Lord that rejected the rule of the new king, Dalinar would finally suffer his largest setback. He had always loved the fight, and he had also loved his family. But during the siege, Dalinar had made the mistake of choosing the battle over the words of his wife. In a fit of rage after the enemy sprung a trap on him, he decided to channel all his fury into the town. Dalinar burned down the whole town, not knowing that his wife was in the town as well as she had tried to negotiate on his behalf in order to avoid bloodshed. He had killed his wife and had directly harmed his family. The blow to the man would cripple him for years to come. Overcome with grief and guilt, Dalinar would drink his days away. It was easier to live in a world of near constant intoxication than in a world of pain. When he wasn't drinking, he was sleeping, and when he wasn't doing that either, he was looking for more to drink. He decided that he could no longer live like this, and he made the decision to seek out the Night Mother to heal him. He asked of her to take his memory of his wife so that he could stop hearing her screams and smelling the smoke of that night. It was Cultivation who actually did as he requested, and not the Night Mother, and this resulted in the effects being only temporary. Regardless, from here he could act and he began leading his people the way his brother would have wanted. He became more honourable and started seeking ways beyond just plain bloodshed. This led to the other high princes calling him weak, but he didn't care. He had principles that he would not give up. Eventually though, his memories returned and with it his overwhelming guilt. He returned to the bottle and tried to drown his pain, but he knew he was turning back into that wretch of a man he once was. It was only when he finally accepted his mistakes and spat back in the face of odium that he finally overcame the guilt. He decided he would rather feel his own pain and keep it to himself as a reminder to always do better and always work to becoming a better person. He made an oath that if he should fall, he will rise each time stronger and better than before. Dalinar has two major aspects to his personality that I find quite intriguing. Like with Kaladin, who had the confliction of a surgeon and a soldier, Dalinar's two aspects are in direct conflict with one another. The first aspect is that of the warrior. He is a fighter, through and through. During his prime, stories were told of the Blackthorn spreading death and destruction about himself on a battlefield. Men ran from him in terror and towns bent the knee at his approach to avoid incurring his wrath. He was a killing machine in almost every sense of the word. Even his older brother, King Gavilar, realized that Dalinar was like a chained hound. Loyal and trustworthy, but deadly and a threat to anyone who opposed him lest he release the Blackthorn on them. In his later years, Dalinar became less active on the battlefield and more of a general leading his troops to victory. 
Though he did spend less time on the field, he could never completely stop fighting on the front lines. The call of the battle was his siren song, and he succumbed to it willingly. Dalinar was, through and through, a source of pure destruction. It's no wonder why Odium wanted him as his champion. With a man like Dalinar, one could subdue all of Roshar in a reign of fire and blood. But that's only one side of him. Dalinar is more than just a warrior. He's a person. A man with wants and fears and loves and desires, just like any other. Dalinar was not just a warrior. He was a man who had his own life, ambitions and fears. He was a husband and a father. He was a brother, an uncle and a friend. The battle consumed him, but this aspect he kept safe from it. Despite his fearsome reputation and prowess on the field, Dalinar was a deep and thoughtful man who cared about his family. He was far from a perfect man, but he was human. He wasn't just a force of death and destruction, he was a person. This side of him and the warrior within often came into conflict with one another. It was when he burned the town and killed his wife that the warrior was in control, allowing him to do what was necessary no matter the cost. It was when he stood up to Odium and denied him from taking Dalinar's humanity when the man was in control, allowing him to rise above his issues and become stronger. Each side of him would make a decision often to the detriment of the other it seems. But Dalinar eventually learns to let both sides of him coexist and work together to create the man he eventually becomes. The warrior calms down and becomes a general on the back lines in order to fight for the people he cares about. The man steps back when necessary and allows the warrior to make a call when the need arises. And he only manages to do this after a whole series of mistakes. These mistakes cost him dearly in the past, but it allowed him to eventually learn how to move on from them. Dalinar, unlike many others in the Stormlight Archive, is a man almost entirely defined by the mistakes he's made in the past. He has become known for things he would rather have left forgotten, or would rather have kept in the darkest recesses of his memory. His first major mistake was letting the warrior take complete control which resulted in the death of his wife. He suffered with guilt for years, but when he finally got rid of the memories, he didn't just fall back on his old ways. He still moved on to make better decisions. He allowed the man to intervene when the warrior took over. But of course, this was a mistake to an extent as well. He allowed the man to take over too much, and began losing the respect of the other high princes. They believed the Blackthorn was growing weak and old, when really he was just beginning to think more with his mind than his sword. Um, innuendo not intended. <laughs> it was only at the Battle of Thalen Field where Dalinar finally forgave himself for all his mistakes and moved on to becoming a stronger combination of both warrior and man. He would not give up his humanity, but he would remain fighting against the evil force threatening the world. He decided to rise above. Dalinar's story is ultimately about a man working through his failures and rising above the mistakes of his past to become a better man. I think this is why I resonate so much with Dalinar to be honest. In my own life, I've begun working through my own failures and trying to overcome issues I've created for myself. I'm trying to move on and become a better man with better circumstances than I've been living with until this point. I've dedicated myself to improving myself and being a better person. This is probably why Dalinar's story strikes such a chord with me. He has his own struggles and problems that he has to work through. His problems and my problems could never really be compared to one another, but when I look at Dalinar overcoming his own mistakes, I feel like there's a man I can relate to. There's a man I can look to and see a bit of myself in him. And this is what Dalinar truly represents. He's a man who rises above. He can be knocked to the ground time after time, but he will continue to rise each time. He will rise and he will do so a better man than he was before, just like he swore in his third ideal. Likely without properly realizing it, Dalinar is a man of honor, and that's what I really love about this character.
there's a long-running theory in the Stormlight Archive community that Dalinar will eventually become Honor, the Shard of Adonalsium. While we won't go into the specifics around that theory and the support for it, I do think one can come to that conclusion if one looks purely at Dalinar as a character. Dalinar is a person who, by every logical reason, should have turned into a monster. He should have become a warmonger and a tyrant. He should have become a lifelong alcoholic and been consumed by guilt every day. But he didn't. Dalinar has, within himself, a deep-seated sense of what is right. He is honourable to the core and will always strive to be the better person. He exemplifies honour and the good nature of men. He has this even to a fault. He trusts Sadius, an old friend, and because of this misplaced trust, he nearly costs not only his own life, but the lives of all his men and his son. Despite acting with honour and good faith, he was repaid with dishonour. And what did Dalinar proceed with doing? Dalinar continued to act with honour. He didn't condemn Sadius or kill him in the first available opportunity. He considered him an enemy, yes, but he would not stoop to the same level and attack him like Sadius did. Each and every time, Dalinar acts with true honour. Dalinar is a very deep character, with very nuanced points of view and an inner strength few other characters have. He is both a warrior and a good man. He is also a character I can deeply relate to on some level. Above all, he is the personification of honour itself. And I think that is why Dalinar is one of my favourite characters in the Stormlight Archive. But, as I always say, that's just my opinion. What are your thoughts on Dalinar? Do you think I'm right or way off? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.